Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt. And this is the part six, the last uh, part, the finale of the basement brewery build. Uh, I'm really, really excited to show you guys how it looks. Spent uh, the last few days getting everything right, cleaning everything off, and uh, I'm uh, really, really happy with how it turned out. I'm happy that I didn't spend too much money doing it too. Uh, so it's definitely, uh, definitely a middle of the road build. So the plan for the episode is to walk through the brewery. I'm going to show everything that we've done thus far. Uh, I want to talk about what the plans are for the brewery as far as what things I want to add in the future. Um, some plans are a lot bigger than others. And then we'll talk about the content on the channel moving forward with YouTube streaming and uh, future YouTube videos. So the... I, I have cameras set up in there as well for YouTube streaming, and I'll show that to you in a bit. So we can get started with the uh, the tour. Okay, so this is the brewery that we uh, set up over the last few episodes. So we have, when you walk in, we have the sink, table, equipment, ventilation, all the plumbing is back there. The fermentation chamber on the last episode is in the closet. Probably paint that black at some point, but it's fine right now. And then on this side is really for the computer, YouTube streaming. Uh, it's good to have a workspace for brewing, brewing salts and uh, if you have any paperwork from the for the brew day and stuff. And I also have some stuff hung, hung on the wall as well. I might change the location of those at some point, but that's where it's at right now. I also got some stools, some seating in here off of Amazon. So we can kind of start on the right, move over to the left. So the storage I had was actually in the um, storage part of the basement. I figured this would be a really good spot to hide uh, my more commonly used items like brewing salt, sanitizer, DME, starter stuff, um, gloves, tubing, pH stuff. Uh, measuring stuff so yeah I figured this would be a good spot for to kind of keep it out of the way and also it's pretty accessible to uh, for brew days I also have my first camera up here and to kind of show you what that's gonna look like it's gonna gonna, gonna kind of give an overview of the whole the whole room and that's primarily gonna be used for YouTube streaming that corner there I also have some cable management as well so all the cables are hidden well, not all, there's a lot of cables over there, but a lot of them are hidden from uh, from view. I also have this desk here, and this is all mounted to the wall. I don't really have anything in the uh, pull-out drawers yet, but we got a chair there. And then we have, over here is the computer. As you can see, there's lots of cables. Uh, but this is my old gaming computer that I use, so I figured this would be a good YouTube, or, uh, a, a streaming slash YouTube box moving forward. I tried to use a Surface Pro, but the Surface Pro did not have enough hardware to even stream or really capture anything. So I have the monitor mounted on the wall and this is camera number two. This camera will be primarily used for YouTube videos moving forward, not streaming. I might use this camera for different angles for uh, brew day streams, but for now that's just gonna be a camera for YouTube moving forward. And then the backdrop for the YouTube channel videos will be my brewing setup and that's right here. So starting from the right, we just have some stuff hung on the wall, like I said. We might change the location of that. We might not. We'll see how that goes. And then this is the uh, the main section of all the hardware. So we have ventilation up here that was installed in episode one. And you might see camera number three right here. So this is a low resolution camera. What this camera is going to be used for is filming the brew kettle because you won't really be able to see when I add things in the other camera. So it's good to have a camera right by the brew kettle and that's all cable managed up there. We also installed a little grain basket uh, wench. We installed some wood up there to mount it to. And this is so on brew days, since I'm doing brew in a bag, if I don't have anyone down here, I can easily uh, shift the brew kettle over to the right, lift the grain basket, put it back down, drain, and then put it back under the vent for uh, boiling. We have the claw hammer, Bruna bag, electric system, uh, and we have the 
temperature controller mounted on the wall. We have a pretty large stainless steel table under here. We have a waterproof uh, power strip and we have a the cooling uh, plate chiller right here. I added two quick disconnect fittings for the water in and out. We always had them for the wart in and out. And the idea is that is that it will connect to the in when we set up the plumbing that it will set up the the quick disconnects for the hot and cold. We can just uh, quick disconnect the the plate chiller right into the wall. Be a little bit easier than messing around with those ground fittings. That also includes adding some tubing, and I 3D printed a little brewery tube holder. Surprised it was actually out there, but there was a design out there for it. So I added some tubing, quick, dis uh, quick disconnects for the uh, for the water in and out for the cooling, and the new tube is obviously white where the other one's yellow. I also built a little drip tray for the pump, and that's screwed right into the pump, and it's just plywood with a waterproof urethane. And I also caulked silicone around the edges, so hopefully when I pull the lines out, it won't spill all over the place, and if it does, that's fine. We got an epoxy floor. Um, but uh, yeah, but that's, uh, that's just for the pump. And then obviously we have the claw hammer, five gallon Bruna bag system right here. And then lastly, we have, well, not lastly, we have the, uh, the, the sink that we set up in the last few episodes. So we have the copper and then we have the PVC that runs underneath and up the wall. You might notice one quick change uh, that I actually had to add a check valve a little closer to the pump. This check valve all the way installed up here was way too high. Um, to the sink so all the water from underneath the check valve was backing into the pump. The odd thing was is that it didn't do that until about a day later, which you'd think would start happening right away, but it was an easy fix. I just had to add a check valve. I added a um, note in the description in the, uh, in the plumbing video about that change, so if anyone was us using that as a guide and wanted to see what it looked like, that's pretty much what I had to change there for the, uh, for the pump been working great ever since I added it and it was an easy install since it's just uh, pressure fittings. And then lastly is we have the fermentation chamber which was installed in the last episode. So we have the ink bird on the wall and then behind the curtain we have the ugly fermentation chamber right there. I'll do a little quick peek inside but if you've been following the YouTube videos you pretty much already know what it looks like. So yeah there's the fermentation chamber. Pretty excited how that turned out. I'm excited to start doing some temperature control with my ale fermentations. And then lastly, we have the floor drain. We added a new floor drain cover right there. So it's a little bit shinier and nicer, and we obviously have a new transition strip for the carpet. But that about covers the tour. Okay, and here's another camera angle to show you what the YouTube uh, studio is gonna look like. And uh, this is just camera number two. This is the camera on top of the computer. I'm also going to show you the other camera angles as well. Uh, the software I use, OBS, you can uh, it supports different scenes, so I can switch to different scenes. Um, and I also want to go over pricing as well. If you followed me from episode one, I'm sure the question came up at some point on how much it cost to do everything like this. So I'm going to go over pricing as well. If you are interested in any of that, that's going to be in the video as well right after this. But to show different camera angles, so this is the YouTube streaming angle, and then also I have a different scene right here, and this is for YouTube streaming. So I have one camera in that corner, and that's going to show the whole the whole video, the whole uh, feed for the uh, stream. And also I have a camera directly above the brew kettle as well, uh, which you can see uh, when I do additions and stuff like that. The light won't be here for YouTube streaming. This is just for uh, for more light for the YouTube channel. Uh, so this won't be your own on stream days, but that's just for uh, that's just for recording the video here. So yeah, I also have another scene to show the uh, brew kettle and uh, show the desktop as well. So if anyone comes in wanting to see Beersmith or if I'm gonna do any calculators, I can switch the switch to the screen that shows the desktop. So yeah, if you're interested in the streaming type of content, let me know and uh, follow the channel and subscribe and like the videos and comment and stuff like that. Uh, there'll be more content in the future coming up, so I'm pretty excited to get going on that uh, pretty shortly. 
The next thing I wanted to go over is I have a piece of paper that goes over pricing. If you're interested in any of that, you can stick around. But I'm gonna go over this pretty quickly because I'd like to get to some other stuff in this video as well. So to go over pricing pretty quickly, the ventilation, everything in the first episode was about $152. The table behind me uh, was originally 160, but there's some dents on the side here. Uh, and I actually went back to the manufacturer and they gave me 40 bucks off, so that's pretty cool. So it was about 120 bucks out of my pocket for the table. The fermentation chamber that was shown in the last episode, episode five, that cost around $120 to build. Uh, the flooring, all of the epoxy flooring, cost around $177, and uh, that was for the epoxy. If you wanna include the, the cost of rental as well, you can probably add another $75 to that. So it's about $250 total for the flooring. The plumbing was the expensive part. There's, uh, there's no other way to say it. Doing Adding a sink when there wasn't a sink is very expensive. Uh, especially the pump. The pump added $200 to the, uh, to the whole sink purchase as well. Uh, if, you, uh, could, if you don't need the pump, uh, it saves you 200 bucks. And also if you already have a sink downstairs or wherever you're brewing in the garage, that saves you a lot of money. But to add the, the, uh, the plumbing, the pump, the sink, the tub, and then the faucet, that was all $500 for the sink. So it was pretty expensive for that. Uh, and then I also have another category for room stuff. Room stuff would include the stools, uh, you know, power strips, uh, cable management stuff, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, the curtains behind me, that was around $180. So all total, it came out to around $1,300 start to finish, give or take 50 bucks. So that's about it for the, for the, uh, for the pricing on that. So if you're ever interested, that's what it cost me. Um, I'm going to try, if you want to look at, see the specific parts I use, make sure to go back through the other videos on my, uh, on this uh, playlist. And you can see in the description sections of what parts I used for the brewery build as well. But that about covers the, uh, what I wanted to go over there. And next I want to talk about what the future is uh, for the brewery and what changes I want to make in the future. So really everything I have in here is I'm happy with. There's going to be a few things that I want to add to the brewery moving forward. For example, so a small thing I want to add is maybe some shelving in the future for some glassware. I think that'd be kind of fun. The only issue is we have a cat that likes to not knock glasses off shelves. So I'd have to figure out a strategic way to place the shelf in a way where the cat couldn't jump on it and knock the glasses off. The other thing I wanted to add in the brewery is I want to add a mural. My wife is an artist, so somewhere on the wall here, there's going to be a mural that you'll probably see in the future. Maybe I'll make a part seven at some point in the series. And you'll definitely see it on Brew Days, live Brew Days on my YouTube streaming channel, um, on this channel. So there's going to be a mural of my logo and also the name of my basement brewery will be on the wall as well. And then lastly, I'm going to have to take my handheld camera and show you for the next part about what the future is for the uh, basement brewery. So the last thing I wanted to mention is this is, uh, this is my basement, so that's the entrance to the brewery. If you walk out in the hallway, I actually have another room right on the other side of the brewery. So brewery back there, I have this room. So right behind that wall is the brewery. I think you can kind of already kind of get the gist of what I'm gonna talk about. But the idea is to convert this room into the tap room. My father-in-law gave me this idea and my wife gave me the green, the thumbs up on it. So. But this will be, this idea will be definitely in the future. I don't have an ETA on this, but uh, the idea is, is at some point to rip out all the carpet in the basement, do a vinyl flooring. And then once we have the vinyl flooring installed, that's pretty much when I'll start the project. Right now, this room is just a 3D printing slash uh, running room, I guess. But the idea here is to do some tables, some chairs, a bar, and I wanna do some sort of glass window where you can see into the brewery. So when you walk downstairs, this room is pretty much the first room you're gonna see when you walk in the basement, right behind these double doors. And this will be the tap room, and then that will work into the brewery in the back. So that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the big the big picture plan. And I think we'll get this done at some point, and we'll definitely record the progress on YouTube. So if you're if you're excited and uh, if you're excited to check out that project in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And uh, Hopefully at some point, hopefully sooner than later, we'll uh, do the vinyl and uh, get this tap room set up.
so that about covers it for the uh, the series. I hope you liked it, and it was a fun fun for me. I learned a lot, uh, and I'm excited to start on new projects uh, moving forward in the future. I'm excited to make some more videos, and I'm excited to start YouTube streaming. I'm already starting to plan my next brew day, so hopefully you'll see a YouTube stream uh, archived on my channel at some point. If you miss it, that's fine. It should be on my channel, so at least that's the plan. So it'll be pretty fun. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.